Center, it is BGSU basketball tonight. Exhibition action as the Falcons meet the Finley Oilers. Let's meet the Falcons starting lineup for this exhibition game. Nathan Benedict in number one, Devin Sigler. A 6 11 sophomore from New London, New Hampshire. Number two, Taylor Matos. A 6 6 junior from Philadelphia, number 25, Dequan Cloudy. A 6 2 senior from Miami. BG wearing the white tonight. Finley and Black, our officials tonight. Mr. Bart Wegenke, Mr. Michael Griffith, and Mr. Todd Von Sassen, who will handle the toss. Taylor Matos in center circle for Bowling Green against Nate Bruns for the Oilers. Falcons will be moving left to right as we watch it here beside Bill Frack Court. Toss and tap controlled by BGSU. And this exhibition game is underway from Stroh Center. Dylan Fry gets it to Justin Turner, who's switched to number one this year. Quickly into the post of Matos. Turn around on the baseline, wouldn't fall for him. BG crashing the boards, but it's controlled by UF that time by Bruns. No score, we're just underway. The Oilers go down inside now. This is Overheiser working against Matos. Got up a tough shot, it spun out on him. Rebound grabbed on the baseline by Fry for Bowling Green. Here come the Falcons. Both teams missed their opening shot. Falcon drive to the elbow. That was Ziegler. Got it to Plowden. Right block. Missed the shot. Got it back. Scored it. Daquan Plowden makes it 2 0 Bowling Green. The Falcons already showing their ability to crash the glass and take the lead. You're exactly right, Todd. Doing a good job of not settling for, settling for early jump shots, being aggressive, getting it inside. Now Plowden knocks a wing pass away. Oilers took on Toledo on Sunday at the newly named arena at UF, Knee Camp Arena and gave the Rockets quite a scare before falling 75-68. Oilers go into the left block this time to Overheiser, actually off the block, shot blocked by Matos, falls into the hands of Plowden, he hands it off to Turner, here come the Falcons up the right sideline. The Mac Free season player of the year, Turner gives it up to Plowden, down to Matos, had it taken away by Overheiser. Here come the Oilers, a 2-0 BG lead. Here's Schmack with it, leaving it left side for Bruns. Out top, Overheiser gave it up. Right point, triple try. Good, Master Lasko. And it's a 3-2 lead for UF. And, and right there, that posi defensive position by the Falcons, we, we lost containment. We had guys running at the basketball, and the Oilers did a good job of rotating it, finding the open shooter to knock down the shot. Here's Dylan Fry driving down to the left block area, and he scores it off the window. BG back on top, 4-3. Now the other way, a dump down in a basket for Bruns on the dish by Schmack. And the Oilers take the lead back by a count of five to four. Bad transition, D, there. Yeah, you're exactly right. We got to do a better job of containing the basketball. Can't allow them to get all the way to the hoop. Falcons back with the basketball. Here's Matto south top. Turner comes to get it from him. Being guarded closely by a master Lasko. Got to the free throw line, missed a little teardrop. A rebound handled by Overheiser for Finley. Got it to Schmack up the floor to a streaking teammate Gray, but he lost it on the way to the rim. Here comes BG with Fry. He'll stop deep three at the left point, air ball. 
Fry uh, saying the ball was tipped nah. and the referee's not buying it. Not, Turnover Bowling Green. Not a good shot right there. Not a good decision by Dylan Fry. While he's capable of knocking that shot down, the def defense was there. He's got to work the basketball around a little more. 5-4, Findlay with the lead. You may recall these teams played last year here at Stroh Center in December. It was a regular season game for Bowling Green, an exhibition for Findlay. Oilers bolted out to a 10-point lead over the first 15 minutes. The game was tied at halftime before Bowling Green won 82-57. Here's Schmack quickly into the front court for UF. They lead 5-4. Schmack gives it up right side for Gray. Out top, Overheiser flips it to the left side for Bruns. Back out top it comes for Master Lasco. A little drive. It's flicked away from behind by Fry with 10 to shoot. All right there, good defense by Dylan, but he's still got to do a better job of containing the basketball. He was able to get his hand on the basketball to tip it out of bounds, but he's got to keep that ball in front of him, keep the uh, offensive player out of the lane. Inbound to Gray in front of the rim. He's fouled by Turner. BG, bad out of bounds under yeah. defense there. Yeah, exactly. Just got caught sleeping. We weren't ready for the play, and, you know, Justin Turner, normally a really good defender, uh, uh, like I said, got caught sleeping. His offensive player went up for the, the oop. Here's Tremaine Gray, a junior out of Akron Firestone. Six-foot junior. Free throw is good. And the Oilers bump the lead to 6-4. The Oilers are one of the premier Division II programs in the country, let alone the Midwest. They've won over 80% of their games in the 2000s including a national title in 2009 with an undefeated season as Gray hits both free throws to bump the lead to three. And they switched a little full court press to try to slow the Falcons down a little and looked like they fell back into a 2-3 zone. Leaves Turner open left corner. He'll bury that triple. And, and we are tied at seven. And that's exactly what you have to do if they're going to back off and leave into a zone. You've got to shoot them right out of it. Here is Schmack. Giving it up on a high right to Gray. He missed that triple. Plowden pulls down the rebound. Quickly gives it up to Fry right side. Dillon gives it back to Plowden straight away. Wants three. Missed everything. Saved in by Turner, but to an Euler, and here they come. This is Schmack pushing. Left hand pass into the right wing. Down the baseline. Gray, great pocket pass for Bruns underneath for two. 9-7 UF. And, and again, a quick shot leading to early transition offense by the Oilers. we got to do a better job. we got to move the basketball at the offensive end. And defensively, we have to contain the basketball. 9-7 UF. Matos, three ball. That's off the mark. And Gray rebounds it for the Oilers. Quickly gives it up to Schmack. He's the engine for UF. He'll stop and drop it out top. Oh, Ziegler with the steal. Look out for this one. Oh, he's fouled. He's very athletic. That's a smart foul by Gray. The biggest vertical leap on the team belongs to the young man who was going to the rim there, Davin Ziegler. And we will have a timeout. Ziegler will shoot a pair when we come back. 15-59 to play, first half. Findlay leads Bowling Green 9-7. The Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. The concert in free BG Burgers tailgate will start at 12 p.m. in Tailgate Park. Eric will announce a $500 scholarship to one lucky student as well. And the Budweiser Good Sports Safe Ride Home Program encourages fans to volunteer as designated drivers to and from sporting events all around the country. Hey, Falcon fans, it's T-shirt time. If you want a free t-shirt courtesy of Coca-Cola, let me hear you make some noise. Who wants it?
Back here at Stroh Center, Todd Walker, Kirk Cowan with you. First media timeout. Bowling Green trails the Findlay Oilers by a count of nine to seven. And free throws coming for Devin Ziegler for Bowling Green. He was fouled going to the rim by Gray before the break. Ziegler's free throw in and out. Ziegler, quite the athlete out of Cleveland Benedictine. Of course, his dad played at Cleveland State. His great-grandfather played for the Globetrotters, so runs in the family as he missed both of them. And it remains a Findlay lead of two. Joey Edmonds bringing the ball up the floor now for Findlay. Freshman out of Cincinnati, Wyoming checking in. Left wing goes to Chaz George. Now out top here is Wildermuth with it. Now left to the point, Chaz George driving inside. Stopped by Sierra, but a little patient turnaround shot. Good, Chaz George makes it a four-point Findlay lead at 11-7. And, and again, we allow just too much penetration to get with the basketball. Now a whistle underneath. And a foul on, foul on Edmonds. UF, and that is Edmonds. And last year, Chaz George, who just scored that last basket for UF, had 14 points here in the game against Bowling Green. So he's coming in fully thinking he's capable of doing some good things. Andrew Emmerich has also checked in for UF as they flip their lineup over. Ethan Linder has checked in as well. Falcons have Ziegler, Plowden, Fry, Sierra, and Turner on the floor. 11-7, Oilers lead. Here's Ziegler with the drive, and he is checked as he went on by by Ethan Linder. Quickness. Linder, one of the many standouts from Northwest Ohio that Findlay has on their roster. He is from Wayne Trace High School. Second team foul. Falcons inbound off the side, trailing by four. We're almost five minutes into it here. Man to man from UF. Out top, Marlon Sierra for BG. Hands it back to Dylan Fry, who dribbles to his right. Used up his dribble. Hands it off there, Ziegler. Seven to shoot, Ziegler from the top of the circle for two. That's a brick. Rebound George for UF. They lead 11-7. They'll push it with Edmonds. BG back defensively. Edmonds works into the left corner, knocked away, stolen by Fry. Here comes BG. Dillon will bounce it down to the baseline for Turner. Tough place. He tight ropes the baseline, passed it out top to Sierra. He's open at the free throw line, and he'll knock it down. Marlon Sierra makes it 11-9, Findlay. And yeah, right there, started with good defense by the Falcons, containing the basketball, getting it down to the other end, and good patience and good move by Marlon Sierra for the uh, free throw jump shot. BG man-to-man -man defense. Here's a drive by Emrick, and that's a tough shot. Plowden might have blocked it. Here comes BG. Sierra boarded it, got to Turner. To Plowden in transition. Offensive foul. Good job by UF to step in front there. And that was, I believe, Wildermuth. Yep, Brady Wildermuth, the junior out of Jackson Center, Ohio. And, and, and right there, Justin Turner, I, I think he set Mar or, um, Daquan up to pick that charge up. Don't You know, Daquan's not really... It's not his strength catching the basketball in transition, putting it down, and, and getting around the defender. So he's got to be aware of know his personnel of who he's getting the basketball to. 11-9, Findlay as Matisse Kulachkovskis checks in for Bowling Green and Mike Laster as well, replacing Plowden and Ziegler. Here's George on the take. Drew Plast blew past Trey Diggs but missed the shot. Sierra had the rebound. Chaz George knocked it away from him, stole it, fed a teammate. Linder coming in from the left side, and he scores. 13-9, University of Findlay. And right there, we did a good job on the initial defensive position, and we gave the basketball away. We got to take care of it. Laster with a pass underneath to Sierra, a little two-man game, and he's fouled by the Wildermuth, and Marlin will shoot a pair. And right there, that's a great pass, great decision by Michael Laster. And that's the good Michael Laster I like to see on the basketball court. Falcons also have Trey Diggs in the lineup. A junior college transfer out of Florida is a big-time shooter. He's been brought in to be that three-point shooter that can bust a zone or just get hot at any time. Here's Marlon Sierra, good at the free throw line. Marlon and Dylan Fry and Trey Diggs will be among the guys going home here in about a week and a half when the Falcons play in Miami. Second free throw coming for Marlon, who played and 33 of the 34 games last year for BG. He knocks it home, and the UF lead is cut in half. I think we're going to see a lot more from Marlon this year. I think I they're going to play him a little bit more at the five uh, with the losing of DiMaggio Wiggins. 
UF with the ball. Here's Linder high on the left. Works into the corner, double teamed, passes out of it out top. There's a three put up by Edmonds, and he buries it. Joey Edmonds with the triple for Findlay, and they have a five-point lead, 16 to 11. And right there, that was great initial defense, but we just did not rotate to the basketball fast enough. Matisse Kulachkovskis open underneath, but he missed the chippy on a good pass from Sierra. Near steal of the outlet by Laster, but here comes Findlay. Chaz George gets it to Edmonds, pass to the wing, tipped out of bounds by Fry. And the Oilers get Tommy Schmock there, floor general back in the game. He was spelled very effectively by Edmonds. Yeah, you're exactly right. And right now, I don't like the way, uh, when, when we're locked in defensively, we're there on the catch. Right now, we're doing a lot of chasing of the basketball. We got to do a better job defensively. We got to get locked in. There's Schmock out top, works to the left point, down to the left block, finds a teammate underneath, an easy deuce there for Andrew Emmerich. And the Oilers lead by 7, 18 to 11. And, and again, that's due to penetration. They were got guys getting all the way to the lane with the basketball. Our bigs have to step up, and, and then their guys are getting the basketball for the easy layups. Trey Diggs working out top, dribbled off his own leg, nearly turned it over, got it to Laster left side, pull up on the baseline, yes. Little 15-footer, Mike Laster will hit those all day. BG within five, Schmock pushing, finds a man on the baseline, Linder, a little pass fake, drive and score low on the left, Ethan Linder. It's back to a seven point Findlay lead, 20 to 13. Again, just not locked in defensively, we're not knowing who we're guarding in transition. Well, Findlay about to have a line change here, and there's a play that doesn't need to be made. BG, tough baseline pass by Laster to Fry, and it was a bad one, turnover. Yep. Findlay with the line change now. Overheiser's back in. Master Lasko is back in. Tremaine Gray is back in. And Nate Bruns back That's in. That's a great job by the Findlay bench. They were able to build Jane on their lead with, 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 with four, four of their start, actually their entire starting all lineup yeah. all, off, the, off the floor. Here's Schmock with a drive and a pass down the baseline stolen by Diggs for BG. He comes ahead. Pass across court to Laster. He'll drive and hang left of the rim. It wouldn't go down. Runs the Oiler rebound. They lead it 20 to 13. Schmock pushing down the middle for the Oilers. Stops and finds Bruns. Quick pass to the right wing. Gray fumbled it. Got it back. Drove baseline. Hangs at the rim and scores. Tremaine Gray, 22 13. Finley, timeout. Bowling Green. We'll step aside with him as it's under 12 minutes. So full media timeout. Finley 22, Bowling Green 13 on the Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. Hey fans, go to sem-trib.com for local news and sports for all of Wood County. Download the app on your phone. Follow us at Sentinel Tribune on Facebook and Twitter for up-to-the-minute breaking news. The Sentinel Tribune offers digital marketing services for businesses of all sizes. Call 419-352-4611 for more information. Digital-only subscriptions are available. Thank you, Sentinel Tribune, for your support for over 150 years. All right, Falcon fans, it's time for a new game. It's time for the emoji game. I'm joined down here with Eli. And Eli, we got three slides full of emojis that mean movies. If you can name all three, you're going to go away with the prize. You ready to go? All right, let's see the first one. All right, what is it? Finding Nemo. Is it Finding Nemo? It is indeed. All right, that's one. Let's see the second one. Yeah. What is it? Sharknado. Sharknado. Is it Sharknado? It is indeed. All right, get the third one. You're going away with the prize. Let's see it. Snakes on a plane. Is it snakes on a plane? It is snakes on a plane. Falcon fans, let's make some noise for him. Eli got all three. He's going to go away with the prize. All right, Falcon fans, it's time to get out of your seats and onto your feet. It's time for the Geico Dance Camp. If you're showing off those dance moves, you can make it onto the video board. Off the under 12 media timeout, we are back here at Stroh Center. Todd Walker, Kirk Cowan with you. Findlay Oilers, just like last year here at Stroh Center, off to a good start. They led by 10 in the first half last year. They lead by nine right now. 
Falcons five on the floor include Mike Laster, Matisse Kulachkovskis, Justin Turner, Trey Diggs, and Marlon Sierra. Man to man from UF, open three left point Diggs, no good. Kulachkovskis trying to tip the rebound around. He ends up tied up with one of the Oilers. I believe that's Master Lasko. It is, and the arrow favors the University of Finley. Finley lined up now, Schmack, Bruns, the aforementioned Master Lasko, also Gray and Aaron Overheiser. Overheiser, second team all at Great Midwest Athletic Conference last year, struggled here with only two points on one of nine shooting it against the Falcons. So he's probably looking for a little redemption, but he's been just patient, just part of the game right now. He and his team leading by nine with the basketball. Oilers working it around the perimeter against a BG man-to-man. -man. Here's Schmack bringing it out top. Got it to the left corner. Master Lasko underneath. Will pass over Heiser. Traveled that time. Nope. Three seconds. Three seconds. And right there, that's a little better, but I still think that we're chasing the basketball around. And, you know, right now, I think we just got to get locked in defensively. I think if we, did, if we do that, we'll be fine. A little backcourt pressure against Laster provided by Schmack, and Matisse Kulachkovskis helps clear him off of the screen. Now in the front court, BG with it. Here's Diggs, left to the point. This pass for Sierra, a bad one, but tipped back to him, and he'll trigger the triple and miss it. Gray skies for the Findlay rebound. They lead it 22-13. Oilers bring it up with Schmack. The Lakewood St. Edward product gives it up, gets it back, left to the point. Schmack into the left wing for Bruns. Guarded by Kulachkovskis. Pass to Master Lasko with the left point. We got a foul on Trey Diggs. Running through a screen set by Schmack. Right there, Diggs, he just turned his head, didn't realize his, uh, the, the defense, the offensive player he was guarding his move, and then he turned, saw he was too late and trying to run through the screen. Got to stay locked onto your offensive man. Of course, this is BG's... Uh, Technically, their second outing against somebody else. They played a closed scrimmage against DePaul about two weeks ago. Fared very well that day, but they're struggling today. Here's a trap, and Schmack realized it very quickly and went ahead and burned that timeout. And that's just savvy basketball right there, realizing he was going to be trapped. Was, didn't want to get too creative with the basketball. Let's burn a timeout, keep possession, and see what we can do coming out of the timeout. Yeah, the Falcons in that uh, game against... Paul, well, I guess it really wasn't a game. It was a, a closed scrimmage. But the Falcons played very well. In fact, beat DePaul 82-72. Daquan Plowden led the way with 22 points. Justin Turner had 15 in that closed scrimmage. The Oilers played an exhibition game Sunday, hosting Toledo. Rockets won at 75-68. Oilers had three players in double figures. Overheiser had 15. Schmack had 11 plus six assists. So the Oilers use the timeout. 22-13, UF with the lead. They'll inbound off the base off the sideline of the front court. They get it into Tremaine Gray between the circles. Drives right of the base, uh, right of the lane and throws it away. That time. Justin Turner didn't really keep him in no. front, but he did push him toward help. You're exactly right, and Marlon Sierra did the correct thing. He stepped up, he kind of faked at the offensive player and got back to his um, defensive assignment. BG down nine with the basketball. Here's Laster being hounded by Schmack. Pass out top to Turner. Now Diggs left to the point, 15 to shoot. Pass out top to Laster. He gets into the lane and had that pass tipped, luckily, because nobody was there. And right there, my, Michael doing the thing that I, I dislike to see him do. He's leaving his feet to make the pass. You, you can still make that pass on the ground. There are very few people that can leave their feet and make passes. LeBron. <laughs> yes. That's about that, it. That, that's yeah, it. That, that's the list right there. Ten to shoot. Falcons are all the way out of midcourt with Laster. Coach Huger barking out the clock. Here's Matisse straight off for three. No good. Falcons have yet to hit a triple, or yeah, Turner hit one. Diggs rebound, and BG will keep it. Here's Justin Turner into the lane. He's bumped by Gray. Now I get the feeling that 
We're going to see a little bit more aggressiveness from GT here over the yeah. next few possessions. I, I think so. He's starting to get impatient. And I shouldn't say impatient because that's not his style of play. But he realizes we're struggling at the offensive end. So he's going to you know, start taking matters into his hand. And he's the type of player that he has that capability. Ethan Linder replaces Gray for the University of Findlay. Inbound to Turner, left corner. Hit one earlier, hits another three. That off the out-of-bounds under 22-16. Findlay's lead now six. Yeah, when players do things like that, they make it look like we know what we're talking about on the sideline. <laughs> Believe me, folks, purely coincidental. <laughs> KC knows what he's talking about, not me. Here's a handoff to Linder. Tried to get a foul call. He missed the three. Rebound picked off by Sierra. Outlet to Turner. Here come the Falcons. Crossover into the lane. Turner to the rim. No finish. Wow. No foul either. Findlay pulls it out of there. Master Lasco. Pass ahead. Schmock found a trailer in transition. Nate Bruns missed the chippy. And the rebound's out of bounds off the Falcons. Getting out hustled right now. Yeah, you're exactly right. We're not getting back. We're not getting back on defense. And right there, Matisse, he's back. He's got to stay down, make the offensive player shoot over him. Instead, he left his feet. We got fortunate he missed the, the, the buddy. But, but when we're not able to secure the uh, defensive rebound. Falcons get Taylor Matos back in the game. The pass inbound for the Oilers. They'll bring it out top to Master Lasco. Now Schmack kind of left. Pass to Overheiser. He lost it. Good defense by Matos that pushed him off the block, and pass was a little off because of that. You're exactly right, and that's great defense. You don't want to allow the offensive player to catch it where it's comfortable. He did a good job of pushing him out, forcing him off that block, and then the errant pass for the, for the turnover. 22-16, UF's lead. BG with the ball. Turner left of the point. Guarded by Master Lasco. They'll shoot a long two from the left point and miss. Fintley rebound. This is Schmock, the littlest guy on the floor. Pulls it ahead, speeds ahead. They drop it back to Overheiser out top. Missed the triple, long rebound. Knocked away from the Oilers, and Matos grabs it for the Falcons. Boy, Master Lasco had that ball, and it got knocked out of there. BG the other way. Laster pulls up right of the baseline. Missed the shot from about 18 feet. Oilers pull down the rebound. Here's Schmack running the show. They lead 22-16. Overheiser straight away. Three ball, air ball. Well, it kind of forced that one. Yeah, he did. I was praising him earlier about his patience. And there he just had predetermined he was going to yeah, shoot you're, that. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think he was upset he missed the, 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 the first shot because it was a wide open look at the three-point line. So he made his mind up he was going to catch that one and try to redeem himself and instead of shot an air ball. Davin Ziegler, Daquan Plowden back in for Bowling Green, joining Trey Diggs, Justin Turner, Taylor Matos. Findlay man-to-man defense. Matos way out between the circles, not where you want him. Hands it off to Turner, 14 to shoot. Justin, they pay a lot of attention to him. Great pass to Matos, rolling to the rim, and he scores. Taylor Matos cuts Findlay's lead to four. And right there, good two-man game by Justin and Taylor. You know, setting the screen and rolling to the basket, and good job of the uh, JT finding him for the easy two. There's a point pass nearly stolen by Turner, but he got through to Overheiser, drives in offensive the lane, and that's foul. an offensive good foul job. as I Trey like Diggs was standing firm in the key. I, I like the fact that Trey Diggs, that he's willing to step in and take that charge. And a timeout on the floor here at Stroh Center. 7.27 to go first half in this exhibition game. Findlay 22, Bowling Green 18. Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. Jessica, and we got two giant inflatable dice. They're gonna throw both these inflatable dice and their combined total, and then we're gonna see if they can go higher or lower on their next throw. Are you guys ready? All right, let's give them a throw. Let's see what you get. All right, 11 fans, should they go higher or lower? What do you guys want to do? Lower. That's a surprise. All right, let's throw them again. I wonder what's going to happen. If this goes higher, this is impressive. Oh, they're just rolling away. They keep going. 
All right, they got three Falcon fans. That means they win the game of higher lore. Let's give them a round of applause. And now, Falcon fans, who wants a free T-shirt courtesy of Coca-Cola? They only go to the loudest fans, so let me hear you. I want a long one. Welcome back into Stroh Center. Todd Walker, Kirk Cowan here with you. This exhibition game, 7.27 to play. First half, it is Findlay 22, Bowling Green 18. These schools have played plenty of times, including last year. This is the 67th meeting. Bowling Green leads the all-time series 51 to 15. The last time they played a regular season game that uh, counted for both squads was 2003-2004. BG 164 to 50. Falcons have Dylan Fry back in the game now. He'll bring it into the front court, being hounded by Schmack. Gave it to Ziegler. Now Plowden left to the point. Out top to big man Taylor Matos. Bounced it back to Fry. Finds Plowden left of the lane. 12 to shoot. Rises and banks it home from 15 feet. That's a nice yeah. looking glasser from Plowden and BG within two. Ooh, nice touch right there. Good job of posting. Good job turning and, and using the backboard. The Oilers with the basketball. They work it on to the high right for travel. Wildermuth and a little shimmy shake and a travel. And right there, that's good defense by Taylor. He's going to be forced sometimes to guard guys that has the capability of putting the basketball on the floor and going to the hoop. So good job of staying in front and creating that turnover. Oilers line up now. They have checked in Joey Edmonds. He'll guard the point. Chas George is in the game. So as Wildermuth, as Fry lets it fly out top for three, no good. Plowden sneaks in for the rebound. Stick back, wouldn't go down. Loose ball rebound, bounces into the hands of an oiler. It's tied up. Arrow favors Bowling Green as Wildermuth and Matos both yeah. had a hold of the basketball. Uh, Matos got lucky right there. I thought he, he kind of stuck his hand in there, but good job of not giving up on the play and you know getting us a second opportunity. Reset the shot clock to 20. Oilers have Ethan Linder in the game along with Edmonds. Also Andrew Emmerich, Brady Wildermuth, and Chaz George. Inbound to Turner, left corner. That one wouldn't go down, and a BG rebound foul on Plowden. So Turner had hit two from that corner. That one rattled out of there. Would have given Bowling Green the lead. 22-20, Findlay as Matisse Kulachkowskis checks in for the Falcons, replacing Plowden. So now you got Ziegler, Matos, Kulachkowskis, three guys who have never or barely played in their careers, and two vets, <laughs> Justin Turner, Dylan Fry. Ziegler nearly with a steal out at midcourt. The Oilers nearly got careless, but they keep control. Here's George right at the point. Gave it up, got it back straight away, thought about it, instead threw it to the left wing to Wildermuth. Back to George, left point, fires a triple. Long, rebound, BG, Turner. Justin surveys things, waits. Gives it up to Matisse, top side. Now Dylan Fry high on the right, 22-20 Findlay. Here's Matos working off the right block, works to the baseline, a little fade away, nope. Rebound Wildermuth for UF, hands it off to Edmonds. Quick pass ahead to George, left sideline. BG back defensively. 22-20 Findlay with the lead, 5.40 to go in the half. Oilers out top, Linder, open three. That's a horrible looking brick from a guy who can really shoot and a rebound foul on Findlay's Andrew Emmerich. And right there, we got lucky by. Because well, Linder was all kinds of open. Exactly. <laughs> Dylan Fry has got to know who he's guarding. You can't go under a screen against a shooter. We, like you said, you know, that we got fortunate because he was wide open. Dylan's got to stay with him. You got to be right there on his hip when he catches that basketball. Yeah, Linder was a prolific scorer at Wayne Trace High School. And was a 40% three-point shooter last year for UF while averaging seven points off the bench. Here's Matisse Kulachkowskis at the line for a one and one after that rebound foul. Free throw good for the Latvian who came to BG via Philadelphia. 22-21, Findlay. Matisse played in 17 games last year his redshirt freshman year after missing his freshman year with a knee injury. You can see where's that brace on that left knee. Makes them both. And we're tied at 22. Oilers did lead by nine. It's a 9-0 run over a long period for Bowling Green, about six minutes to do it. 
Here's Linder giving it up out top to Emrick. Back to the left wing, Wildermuth blows past Matos, kicks it back to the left point, Emrick dribbles down left of the lane, got it to the right point for Edmonds who hits the three. It's second, and just like that, Finley goes up three, 25-22. And right there it looked like, and I, I don't know who, but someone lost contain because um, you had Ziegler running out at the basketball and then trying to get back to the, his offensive player. There's the backdoor yeah. cut and a catch and a score by Turner off the bounce pass by Fry. Turner coming out of the right wing for the lay-in, BG down one. And right there, just the two vets hooking up for an easy, simple basketball play. They're denying you hard to go back door for the easy lay -up. Edmonds wants three more in the right corner, and he'll get three more. Joey Edmonds, the freshman out of Cincinnati, Wyoming, bumps the Oiler lead to four, and that Findlay bench enjoying themselves. 425 to play in the half. Here's Ziegler left side. He'll drive into the lane. He'll get tied up. He'll force it up on the rim and draw the foul. So Ziegler will go to the line. Foul going to be on Edmonds for U of F, his second. And right there, that was just a case to Ziegler deciding, you know what, you hit a couple of threes on me. I'm just going to take you and try to yeah, score let's on do you. this. Falcons going without Caleb Fields tonight with an ankle injury. We do think he'll be able to play on the road trip to LSU and Miami. Questionable, though, for Tuesday's season opener against Tiffin as Ziegler misses another free throw. And another. He's 0 for 4. That's not going to cut it. 28-24, Findlay with the lead. And with Ziegler's athleticism, he's going to get to the line. He needs to get proficient there. Oilers. With the basketball, stepping left, Linder shoots a triple and missed it. Rebound long, Oilers save it in. No, no Falcons chasing after it. Here is Emmerich in the lane, blocked by Matos, but it goes out to the left corner for George, who missed the three. Long rebound, Findlay. They give it up out top. Edmonds, three ball, that missed. Matos can't grab the rebound. It comes off to Wildermuth. Fry knocked it away. Matos grabbed it and got a foul call. And right there, the Falcons, we dodged a few bullets because we a, a good job of Finley pursuing the offensive boards, and the Falcons were just standing and watching. Well, that sequence might have lit Bowling Green's fuse a little bit if you just look at body language and facial expressions. We'll see how it works out after the final media time out of the first half. 3.47 to go until the break. Finley 28, Bowling Green 24 on the Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. Pleasure. We at Sam B's believe that the straw that serves a drink at Bowling Green State University is the student athlete. We're proud of our association with BGSU Athletics and we are proud supporters of every student athlete at BGSU. Whether you stop in for a light bite before a game or after a game for a great meal, Sam B's is the place to be. We're sure to please any crowd. Huntington Bank values and supports our men and women in uniform. Huntington is providing a special experience to active duty or veteran BGSU students through the Huntington Student Veteran of the Game. They want a great way to see multiple athletic events without committing to a full season? Then the Flex Plan is for you. Contact the ticket office on how to get your $90 Flex Plan. All right, Falcon fans, it's time to get up and get flexing. It is the Orange Theory Fitness Flex. I don't know, maybe we should just leave the Commodores up there. I don't know. 
Back with you here at Stroh Center, Todd Walker, Kirk Cowan, Taylor Matzo set the line from Bowling Green to shoot one and one when play resumes. Finley leads the Falcons 28-24 with 3.47 to go until halftime. Matos at the line. Free throw, no good. 0 for 3, last position, last Falcons three are now shots 4 from the of line. 9 from the line as a team and trail by 4. PG trying to get aggressive in the half court here. Oilers get it into the right corner. This is Embrick dribbles to the elbow to the free throw line to the left block and what? he is wow. contacted by Kulachkovskis. Wow. That was just a little give and take there. Yeah. But they give Tease the foul. He, he's initiating the contact. Tease is just holding his ground. Marlon Sierra checks in for Bowling Green, replacing Taylor Matos. So it's Laster, Fry, Turner, Kulachkovskis, and Sierra for Bowling Green. Oilers inbound the ball. They have George and Linder on the floor along with Wildermuth. Here's Linder into the lane, bounce it to the left corner for Chaz George. Drives baseline in trouble, but whipped it out top. Edmonds deep, straight away, yes. Better put a hand in the face of Joey Edmonds. Better yet, you better just be in his shirt when he catches it. 31-24, yeah. Finley by seven. Yeah, right. Mike Laster has used up his dribble. He's in trouble, finally gets rid of it. The Tease, he drives in the lane and missed the shot. Finley rebound. Tipped away by Emmerich to Edmonds. Here's George. Oh, taken away at the rim by Laster. What a play. Mike Laster the other way. Euro step to the basket and scores. Mike Laster taking things into his own hands. 31 26, Findlay. Well, that was a four point switch right there. Here's Wildermuth. Left block working around Sierra. Got him off his feet. Drew the foul. And Brady Wildermuth. Showing some crafty moves down there against Sierra. And Wildermuth will step to the stripe. Yeah, right there, Marlon's just got to do a better job of staying down. Make him shoot over you. It's a, you know, if he shoots it over you and make it, that's one thing. Don't don't bail him out by by leaving your feet in the shot fake. Wildermuth good on the free throw. Trey Diggs in for Bowling Green. Matisse Kulachkoskis out. Findlay with the number of subs here as Edmonds and. Emmerich and George leave. Master Lasko, Bruns, Schmack in. Joining the holdovers, Linder and Wildermuth. The latter with another free throw. And now he'll exit. Replaced by Overheiser. So BG tied it at 22. Since then, the UF on an 11-4 run to bump the lead to 7, 33-26. And right now, just the three-point line, the three-point shot's been the difference in this basketball game. We've allowed Finley to get a lot of open looks because we're, we're, we're chasing the basketball and we have guys over helping. Here's Laster with a drive and a kick to the right corner. Turner three ball, that's good. Justin has three triples representing all of Bowling Green's output behind the arc in the first half. 33-29, Finley's lead. And right there, that's good basketball by Michael Laster. Penetrating, pulling the defense to him and finding the open guy. Well, the Oilers with it. Top side overheiser whips at the left corner. Schmack quick trigger on the three and he hits. Tommy Schmack knocks that lead right back to seven as we go under two minutes to play in the half. Laster high on the right for Bowling Green dribbles to the middle of the floor. Gives it up to Turner straight away. Barks out instructions to Diggs. Now puts it on the floor with the left hand, got in the lane, is passed to the corner, tipped away by Schmack with nine to shoot. Falcons, a lot of finger pointing yeah. and complaining right a now. Lot, a lot of guys out there talking, a lot, a lot of talking, but the communication, it, it doesn't seem good, just uncertainty of what we want to do, what we're running at the offensive end. Nine to shoot as the Falcons inbound on the baseline in the left corner. Bounce it into Sierra, now Turner left of the point. Comes to the top, to the right point, stops, steps back, shoots a three, in and out. Oilers the rebound, 90 seconds to go in the half. They lead 36-29. And for the second straight year, the Oilers have dominated the first half here at Stroh Center. Here's Linder with it, leaving it left point for Bruns, drives into the paint. Stops, pops, and bricks. Rebound Laster for Bowling Green. He'll speed up the floor as he's wont to do. Gets in the lane, off-balance shot, wouldn't fall. Got out of control. Overheiser, the Findlay rebound. 
Here comes Schmack with a minute to play in the half. Oilers by seven. And a bad pass as he tried to get it to Bruns, who thought he was fouled by Diggs, yeah. but no call. We got fortunate again because it, 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 Michael Lasser, as much as he gives you good, he, he, there's a lot of bad sometimes. And that last offensive possession, just a, a, a one-man show, wasn't a good shot. Falcons down seven with the basketball, nearing halftime here. Dylan Fry gives it up right wing to Sierra. Comes out top to Laster. Laster to Diggs, high on the left. Trey driving, hanging left to the rim and scoring. Diggs, known as a shooter, takes it to the rim there. 36-31, Findlay. 35 seconds to play. We have about nine seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock here. Oilers with a five-point lead as we near intermission. See, I don't like this. I, I want to get up in them, for, force them to do something, force them to play. We're, you know, we're allowing them to basically dribble down the clock and get into what they want to. Now here's Schmack with a pass to the baseline for Bruns. Two, one, threw it away to Fry. He nearly got it taken away. Now brings it up the floor to Turner. To the right corner, Diggs. Three at the buzzer, yes! Trey Diggs with a bomb from the right corner to end the half. A rare highlight for BGSU here in the first 20 minutes as the Findlay Oilers have taken it to Bowling Green and lead the Falcons at the break by a count of 36 to 34. Take a look at the scoreboard as we want to welcome the many groups in attendance here tonight at the uh, Stroh Center, Bill Frank Court. Thanks to all the groups who turned out tonight. And fans, now your chance to get season tickets for the basketball season. Make sure you head to the ticket window at halftime to get your season tickets. You want a great way to see multiple athletic events without committing to a full season? Then the flex plan is for you. Contact the ticket office on how to get your $90 flex plan. And once again, starting 10 minutes left in the second half, BGSU students can purchase discounted concessions where? At the Bird Feeder concession stand. When managing your money, experience the Glass City Federal Credit Union Advantage. It's easy to join. Membership is open to anyone who lives, works, worships, or attends school in Lucas, Wood, Fulton, or Ottawa County.
Games. It's here for your BGSU Falcons. the air on the Falcon Sports Radio Network at 6.30 with the Falcons and Dragons tipping at 7 o'clock. And then the Falcons go on a road trip to Baton Rouge and Miami. They will play the LSU Tigers next Friday, November 8th. And then they will play the Jacksonville Dolphins in Miami at the home of the University of Miami Hurricanes. Of course, that particular stop facilitated in large part by the presence of Jim Laranega at Miami, the former BGSU coach and coach Coach Huger worked for before he got this job. And the Falcons trying to get back to Miami with their three Miami area, actually four, Janiah Gadsden, 
Marlon Sierra, also Trey Diggs, and of course Dylan Fry, all from South Florida. So that's a big reason they engineered that particular trip. And the Falcons come home for November 15th, a date with Fairmont State. And then it's off to the Virgin Islands to play the likes of Western Kentucky and then either Cincinnati or Illinois State. And then who knows in the third game of that event before the Falcons will come home for Dartmouth, Oakland, and Cleveland State to take us into mid-December. Falcons and Oilers about ready to go here in the second half. BG will now be going right to left as you watch with us. BG five on the floor to start the second half. Davin Ziegler, Dylan Fry, Justin Turner, Daquan Flowden, Taylor Matos. BG in the home whites with the orange numerals tonight. Finley in the black with orange. Tommy Schmock, Nate Bruns, Tremaine Gray, Aaron Overheiser, and Anthony Master Lasco. The lineup for coach Charlie Ernst and company, and they'll have the ball to begin the second half. And right away, Overheiser cranks a three from the right point, missed it, and Ziegler didn't box out, missed nope. those rebound. Finley will keep it on the long rebound and get it to a wide open gray, and the three at the left point missed. And Finley continues to dominate the boards, although they couldn't grab that one. It, they it, seem to tip every one of them. It's unbelievable. It's right now, it just seemed like we're watching the basketball and they're going after the basketball. Fry posting up, gives it back to Turner in the left corner. Dylan, or I should say Justin, works into the paint, dumped it down to the baseline to Plowden, who reverses it up and in. Going right to left under the basket, Plowden ties the game at 36. Here's the post entry. Overheiser working against Matos, left block, got to his right hand, flipped it up and in. That, that one was a little too easy. Tyler's got to do a, give a little bit more resistance. He allowed him to take a couple of dribbles and get right to the front of the rim. That's too easy. Aaron Overheiser with his first points. Bendley up two. Here's Ziegler driving into lane. Got caught in no man's land, but bailed himself out with a pass to Plowden right side. Now Fry high on the right, back to Plowden straight away. Daquan puts it on the floor, barrels into the lane, scoops it up with the right hand and scores. When you're just athletic, you can That's jump and when it. everyone's coming down, you're still you're still going up. That's just a man's play right there. 38-38 tie. Overheiser working out of the right corner, backing down on Matos. Better defense by Taylor, but no box out. Overheiser tipped the ball out to a straightaway three. Good for Master Lasco. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize it was going to be that that obvious our first time out how much we're missing DiMaggio Wiggins, but right now we're just doing a horrible job on the defensive board. Three for Master Lasco gives UF a 41-38 lead, two minutes into the second half. Falcons to the basketball. Matos being guarded by Overheiser out there. Fry feeds it to Plowden left block. Dylan. Or Daquan, little jump hook, no good. Defense very good by Bruns, and he also got the rebound. Gave it to Schmock. He'll push and dish to Master, Master Lasco. Left corner, missed the three. Rebound Taylor Matos for Bowling Green. 41-38, UF leads. Dylan Fry saunters into the front court for the Falcons. Gave it up to Plowden. Steps into a triple left point, no good. Rebound stolen away by Davin Ziegler for Bowling Green. Falcons will reset. DZ with the basketball out in the center circle. Works to his right hand, got to the elbow, gets in the paint, hangs and bricked it off the back of the iron. Overheiser with the rebound for Findlay. Scooped it to Schmock, who'll bring it into the front court. Find a man on the baseline and a foul on Daquan Plowden against Master Lasco. First foul of the second half. Finley 41, BG 38. Right now, I, I don't like the way we're playing defense. We're, 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 we're just allowing Finley to dribble up the court and get to where they want to with the basketball. I'd like to see it just put some more pressure on them, speed them up a little, get them out of their comfort zone. UF brings the ball in off the baseline, get it to Schmock, little shot fake, drives inside, finds Overheiser coming off the right side, and he will be fouled near the right block by Taylor Matos. And stepping to the stripe will be Overheiser, the 6'7 senior out of South Haven, Michigan. A 71% free throw shooter last year. A little bit of a funky delivery there. Yeah, it's almost like he's shooting a, a, a hitch on the shot and yeah. just his entire body's getting sideways. Plowden and Ziegler out for Bowling Green. Diggs and Kulachkoskis in. 
Three minutes into the second half, Findlay leads BG 41-38. Second free throw missed and a rebound foul on Nate Bruns of Findlay. His first. Yeah, but, you know, he got called for a foul there, but still he got his hand on the basketball uh, on a free throw block out. That shouldn't happen. Falcons five on the floor now. Fry, Turner, Diggs, Kulachkoskis, and Matos. Here's Taylor Matos out top. Whips it down to the baseline. Fry reversed it up and in. Coming left to right under the basket. Dylan Fry's second field goal of the night. Bentley's lead is one. Here's Master Lasco behind a screen left point. Bombs away three. Anthony Master Lasco. Makes it a Findlay four-point lead. Here's Fry into the lane, leans in, missed, missed near the basket, tip rebound, runs to Schmack, pass ahead for Gray, swoops to the hoop, missed a lefty land. BG rebound, Turner outlet ahead to Fry. Dylan is fouled by Schmack in transition. And again, Schmack always seems to pull out a smart foul. Yeah, and you're, you're exactly right. He's just a savvy basketball player. You know, can't really speed him up, and he, he, he's, his court awareness is, is off the charts. 44-40, Findlay with the lead. Of course, Schmack was a standout guard at St. Edward High School in Lakewood near Cleveland. Coach Flannery and company, one of the best programs in Ohio. Here's Justin Turner, high on the left. Jabs right, drives left, flips it up, scores it in a foul. Tommy Schmack thought he got there. Bart Wegenke thought he didn't. And Justin Turner has got a three-point play opportunity, and BG's within two. And right there, good job and good recognition by JT, realizing that, you know, they're, they're playing him hard. They're showing hard on that ball screen, so he, he denied the screen and attacked the basket going left. And good job uh, navigating around, uh, uh, around the defensive player trying to pick up the charge. Turner with 13 points now will step to the stripe. Last year, Justin was a 71% free throw shooter. 44-42 Findlay. We have 16-02 to play in the game as Turner cans the free throw to make it a one-point game. Third foul, by the way, on Schmack, so he's taken down in favor of Joey Edmonds now at the point for Findlay. Also, they brought in George and Emmerich and Linder and Wildermuth. they have gone to their bench lineup again. They had played very well in the first half. Here's George working out top to the free throw line area. Pull-up jumper, no good. BG rebound digs and Wildermuth crashing to the boards fouled him. And that See. takes us to a timeout. 15-38 to play in this game. Finley 44, Bowling Green 43 on the Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. ABGSC hey, students, remember starting with 10 minutes left in the game, you can purchase discounted concessions at the Bird Feeder Concession Stand. All right, Falcon fans, it's time for the B Dubs half court shot. I'm joined with Mitchell. And Mitchell, if you can make one half court shot, you're going to go away with a $250 gift card to Buffalo Wild Wings. Fans, we want them to win, right? We want them to win? All right, Mitchell, whenever you're ready, can I get a drum roll? There we go. Whenever you're ready, bud. Let's see it. It's up. All right, it's off the backboard. We're looking good. We're looking good. It's all right. He's got a second chance. If you make this one, you get a $100 gift card. It's up. Oh, we're so close. All right, last chance. Last chance. Make this one, you get $50. Let's see it. Come on. Let's get in the bucket. Oh. Oh, let's still give Mitchell a round of applause, fans. He gave it us all. Now, if you want a free T-shirt, now let me make some noise because we got more T-shirts courtesy of Coca-Cola. So, who wants a free T-shirt? Back here at Stroh Center, Todd Walker, Kirk Cowan with you. First media time out of the second half. Bindley maintaining a one-point lead with 15.38 to play. UF 44, Bowling Green 43. And uh, KC, the Oilers continue to be the aggressor as far as the boards, the loose balls, that kind of thing. Yeah, right now they're just out hustling the Falcons, you know. Um, every time the shot goes up, the Falcons, we turn. We're not boxing out for one, but we're turning and looking, expecting someone else to go get the basketball where the Oilers, they are going after it. 
as a unit. So we got to do a better job on the defensive boards. And then uh, defensively, we still have to run them off the three-point line. They are still getting good quality looks from behind the arc. Yeah, Anthony Master Lasco has hit two triples to start this second half. Falcons five on the floor now. Dylan Fry, Justin Turner, Matisse Kulachkowskis, Trey Diggs, and Marlon Sierra. A little backcourt press by the Oilers. The Falcons get it into Fry, and the rest of the Oilers drop off and leave Edmonds to escort Fry. Now into the front court here, Sierra near the right point. Hand off to Diggs. He'll shoot it from there. There it goes, and there it is. Trey Diggs with the bomb, and Bowling Green has the lead, 46-44. First lead since early in the ballgame. 15-14 to play. Now let's see if the Falcons can get a stop. Here's Emmerich working to the free throw line area. He gave it up in the left wing to George. He whips a pass that's stolen by Diggs. He'll come up the sideline. He'll get blocked and fouled by Edmonds. And the Falcons coaching staff really like the ability of Trey Diggs. I'll tell you what, he's out there. He looks long and lean. And the ability to stretch the floor like that, that's going to be a great addition for the Falcons. And he's got those flowing locks, <laughs> right? Falcons with a two-point lead. Cutter, Fry, Sierra pass, scoop and score, Dylan Fry. And BG up four, 48-44, their biggest lead of the game. Hey. Timeout, Findlay. Veteran coach Charlie Ernst knows a run when he sees it. And that's just great basketball right there by Marlon. The first time down, you, you, you go to Diggs, he knocks down the three. So what do you do? You run the same play. Now the, the, the Oilers are playing for that three-point shot. You have Dylan Fry going backdoor. You hit him for the you hit him with the backdoor cut for the easy layup. We'll stay here with you after the timeout called by University of Finley coach Charlie Ernst. And we talked about how strong the Spindley program is. Good thing we're not playing at newly named Neat Camp Arena. Coach Ernst's home record is 112 and 12. Wow. That's pretty strong. That, that, I would say. That's not bad. Oilers were 28 and 5 last year. One of those five losses coming here to the Falcons. Although I'm not sure if they counted that in their record last year or if it was an exhibition game for them. Nonetheless. Uh, they gave Bowling Green quite a battle for a lot of that game, and Oilers look to be strong again this year in the Great Midwest Athletic Conference, and their goal always to make the Division II tournament. Of course, for Bowling Green, KC, Coach Huger's been open about wanting to end that 51-year drought. The Falcons haven't been dancing since 1968. Yeah. It's an atrocity of the highest level. Yeah. <laughs> he, he knows it as acutely as anybody like you, anybody that played here. Uh, it, it needs to come to an end, and this team thinks maybe they can be the one. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I agree with Coach Uger because, like you said, it, and being a former player, I know we've had the teams capable uh, uh, getting to the tournament, and, you know, for a fluke here and a fluke there, it doesn't happen. But, it, you know, despite right now the way we're playing I know we have the talent we have the depth to possibly get over the hump this year and you know I'm looking forward to good things from this basketball team speaking of the coaching staff they, they, they are very excited about the group of guys they have on this on the team this year so uh, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed like most Falcon fans and see what happens you mentioned the Falcons might be missing DiMaggio Wiggins on the defensive boards. Do you want to salute Maj? He was taken in the first round of the G League draft by the Greensboro Storm, 14th overall in the G League draft. The Storm, a, an affiliate of the Charlotte Hornets. So congrats to DiMaggio. Back to action. Finley with the ball off their timeout. They're down four. Post pass wide and not handled. Out of bounds. A bounce pass by Linder there was a little wide of Emmerich's reach and that's due to two things first great job by by um, Matisse on the post and then good job of Diggs being visible being big not making it an easy entry pass for the wing player BG with the ball the four-point lead here's Diggs out top a little fake Linder doesn't bite Diggs dribbles left fires a triple in and out rebound tipped around grabbed by Linder for Findlay hands it off to Edmonds 48-44 Bowling Green. Edmonds went four for four from deep in the first half. Gives it up to George left side. Dribbles to the baseline. Back out to the wing. It comes out top now into the right side for Linder. Linder drives baseline on Turner. Bounced it to the other side. Into the lane. Emmerich missed that shot. Sierra the rebound for Bowling Green. 
Hands it off to Justin Turner. Turner found Sierra in transition. Stops, drives, flips it up, score it with the foul. Stepping in, trying to take the charge there for the Oilers was Emmerich and Sierra. Nice step around and one. It's 50 44 Bowling Green. You're exactly right. Good job. I love the fact that Marlon did not settle, even though he was wide open for the three point shot, did not settle for the shot. Saw the defend, the initial defender running out on him, used the shot fake, get around him, was able to pick up the and one. 50 44 Bowling Green now with its biggest lead of the night with 13 46 to play in this game. Sierra free throw a lot of rim but good. He's got seven. Marlon a 78 percent free throw shooter last year was the best on the team. 51 44 Bowling Green with the lead. Finley with the basketball They're starting five set to check back in. This is all their bench here right now. There's Edmonds left wing out top to Emmerich. Back to Edmonds deep out top. A shot fake drive, bounced it down to the left block, and one for Emmerich. Fouled by Kulachkovskis, and Andrew Emmerich will step to the stripe. And, and right there, uh, uh, a possession where we do not contain the basketball. We allowed Edmonds to get by us. And what does he do? He draw that big, that, that, that big that has to step up to stop the basketball. He drops it down to his man for the end one. So we got to contain the basketball. Here's Emmerich, a 6'9 senior out of Lakota East via Fairmont State. The team Bowling Green will play here in a couple of weeks. He makes the free throw. He's got five points and he'll exit. So 51 47 Bowling Green. Chandler Turner has checked in for the first time for Bowling Green, number 13. Falcons five on the floor now. Michael Laster, Trey Diggs, Dylan Fry, Chandler Turner, Matisse Kulachkovskis. Here's Fry. Shot fake, drive to the left elbow, shoots on the pull up, it wouldn't go down. Tip up wouldn't go in for Laster. Finally, it volleyballs off and corralled by Overheiser for Findlay. BG by four. Here's Schmock, pass ahead to the right corner. Bruns attacks the paint. Got it to the other side of the paint for Overheiser. Low on the left, he will get it to go, but he tipped it up and in. Overheiser follows his miss, and BG's lead is two. 12.50 to go. Again, not boxing out, not finishing the play. And here Chandler Turner is banged by Nate Bruns. And I'm not sure how you would protest that's not foul. <laughs> Nate was a pretty good football player at Marion Local High School. Well, but it he, showed. he was a quarterback, though. Okay. Well, he, he picked up some yeah. stuff from his linemen and defensive line, defensive guys because that was a, a straight shoulder block. And it's a one-on-one -on -one for BGSU. Foul on Bruns will send Chandler Turner to the line. Again, he is from Detroit Renaissance High School, same high school as Justin Turner. He shares a surname, but they are not related, other than they're both pretty good basketball players. Here's Chandler at the line for a one on one, and he gets it to go. Chandler also got about three inches of height on Justin. And, uh, another young man that the coaching staff is really excited about having on the team. BG by three, 52 49, 12 43 to play. Second free throw good. Chandler Turner. Finley lineup now Tommy Schmock, Nate Bruns, and Anthony Master Lasco, Aaron Overheiser, and Tremaine Gray. This is Master Lasco with it dribbled off his foot. Schmock picks up the rolling basketball, resets the offense. 15 to shoot. Schmock working left point, Falcons hounding him. Schmock got in the lane, found Gray. Straight away three, in and out. Rebound, Bruns can't hang on. We get a collision, and the ball out of bounds to Bowling Green. Again, we did not box out. We got fortunate. Michael Lasser was able to tie him up, and you know Bruns lost the possession of the basketball. But we are watching. We have to box out. Laster will shake it up, but appears to be okay after that. Collision that took him to the floor. 53 49 BG with the basketball and the lead. There's Diggs, right wing. Pass out top to Sierra. Marlon looking it over. Decides to hand it off to Laster. Uh oh, Tremaine Gray decides to steal it away. He'll get to the rim and flush it down. And that's a big time dunk for Tremaine Gray. That's going to fire up the Findlay Oilers and their fans who made the short drive up I 75. 53-51, BG's lead is two. Sierra, left block, found a cutter. Laster fumbles the ball, got it back, flipped a shot up of the rim, missed it. And Chandler Turner is fouled on the rebound. 
Timeout at Stroh Center. 11.34 to go. Bowling Green leading Finley 53-51. Timeout on the Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. Now's your chance to get season tickets for the basketball season. Head to the ticket window to get your season tickets. All right, Falcon fans, I got one simple question for you. Who is hungry? If you're hungry and you want a free chance pizza, you got to make some noise if you want this pizza. So who wants it? Hey, you want it? You guys want it? Do you, you want this pizza? I'm, I'm migrating this way. I don't know, I'm migrating this way. I'm sorry. Ooh, ouch. Hey, I see some people who want this pizza. Bowling Green will be at the line. It's a one and one for Chandler Turner. BG 53, Findlay 51 with 11.34 to play. Chandler Turner at the line to try and increase the lead off the media timeout. He left it short, but nobody boxed him out. But he got the ball taken away by Overheiser. They had their arms intertwined there, and Chandler just sort of let him take it away from him. Finley backdoor cut BG with a kickball by Fry as Schmock tried to feed Master Lasko coming down the left baseline. 11 21 to play, BG 53, Findlay 51. The Oilers just played Toledo Sunday night, lost to them by seven, and they're giving Bowling Green more than a battle here tonight. There's a lob inside. Brun scores on the out of bounds under for Findlay. And we're tied at 53. That's unacceptable. That's just not being ready to play basketball. Falcons had a seven point lead not long ago, but the Oilers have tied it up. Fry catch and shoot three left side. Short, no good. Rebound Overheiser for Findlay. Got it to Edmonds. Edmonds on the floor with Schmack. Passed it to the right side for a three. No good that time by Bruns. Tied at 53. Here come the Falcons. Mike Laster, top of the circle. Nearly got it taken away by Edmonds. Laster now works to the right point on the dribble. Bounces it to Sierra, right block. Looking for somebody to give it up to. Out top to Diggs. Shot fake, steps left, lets it fly, and missed the triple. Out of bounds to Findlay. Daquan Plowden, Justin Turner, Taylor Matos will check in for Bowling Green. As Fry, Sierra, and Diggs exit in a tie ball game. And yeah, right there, just you know, contested jump shot. I think you make one more pass, you get a better look. But right now, the Falcons are pressing a little at the offensive end. 
Schmack into the front court for Findlay. Gives it up to Master Lasko high in the left. Out top it comes to Overheiser. Now Bruns high on the right. Pass to the top. Edmonds. To Master Lasko left point. Driving on Chandler Turner. Got to the rim. Turner recovered and blocked it. Plowden grabbed it for BG. Gave it to Justin Turner. Justin. Nothing happening. Pulls it out. Now gives it up to Plowden right side. Daquan will shoot right of the lane and miss the shot. Schmock the rebound for Findlay. He'll push down the middle of the floor. A crouching dribble. Scoop a pass out top for Master Lasko. Down to the baseline. Bruns open. He missed the bunny. Wanting a foul. I'm not sure no, there was one there. They wanted it a uh, goal tendon because oh, the rim tending. was okay. hit. Meanwhile, Chandler Turner for three right side for BG. That, that's a break by the Falcons because um, Taylor did hit the rim and they missed it. 56-53, BG's lead is three. Oilers, Master Lasko driving left baseline. Shut off, got it back out on the wing to Schmock. Skips it all the way to the right side for Edmonds. Shot fake, steps left, shoots three, got it. There's no way that pass is supposed to make it cross court in a Division I basketball game. It's a lob pass over the across court. Tied at 56. Chandler Turner driving baseline, found Matos near the rim. He missed it. Rebound, Finley. They have Schmock and Edmonds. Both are point guards in the game here the last several possessions. Oilers looking for the lead with 8.45 to go. There's Overheiser with it left to the point. Into the left wing for Edmonds. Overheiser screens for him. Edmonds leaves it out top for Bruns. Eight to shoot. Schmock high on the right, six to shoot. Finds a rolling Bruns coming to the rim. He catches and scores. Low on the right, and Fidley up to 58-56. And, uh, you know, right now the Falcons, our defense is, it looks really bad because, like I said, you know, the Oilers are doing what they want to do and get to where they want to get on the court. PG, Plowden attacking and getting fouled on the way through with 8-11 to play. Foul on Nate Bruns. It's his third. Fidley, more subs, George, Linder. Emmerich in along with Wildermuth as Bruns and Overheiser and Schmack check out. One and one for Plowden. This will be the final one and one. Plowden has eight points tonight. Falcons have been pretty good at the line other than Davin Ziegler who was 0 for 4. Sierra's three for three. Kulach Koskis is two for two. Chandler Turner is two for three. Justin Turner is one for one. Taylor Matos 0 for one. Plowden now one for one with that free throw. BG within a point, 58-57. 8-11 to play in the game, and now they're tending to Taylor Matos, who must, must have some blood on his elbow there. Get the hazmat team out <laughs> after him. Pose him off. He's good to go. Just, just wrap it up. After much ado about not much of anything, we'll get back to the free throw line with Daquan Plowden. Plowden, four first half points, five second half points, and in and out on the free throw that would have tied the game. Approaching the eight minute mark, Findlay leads by one. Oilers work it to George, left to the point. Chaz George working out top, gives it up. Now it goes right wing to Linder. He'll get in the lane, he'll fake a look to the right wing and then drive and score. Three point Finley lead. 7.45 to play. And now can Bowling Green find the intestinal fortitude to avoid this upset? Chandler Turner misses a runner in the lane. Matos picks up the loose ball and scores it. Taylor Matos. 60-59, UF by one. The only good thing about that is that we went after the offensive board. We didn't just stand and watch. Oilers with the basketball. Linder wants three, high on the right, and he got it. Ethan Linder can flat shoot, and the Oilers have every intention of coming in here and winning. They're up four with seven minutes to go. Here's Justin Turner. He drives to the rim and scores from the right wing. 63-61. I say what, we just, offense, just give him the basketball and let him decide what he wants to do. But, you know, we got to get going at the defensive end right now. We are not playing defense at all. 
Under seven minutes to go. Open three for the man who made four in the first half. In and out, no good. Rebound missed on a block shot by nope. Plowden. Wildermuth had that point blank range, but Plowden blocked it. Here's Laster with a step through and a lay in. And Bowling Green has tied the game at 63. How was Edmund that open for a look when we got fortunate that he missed it? Well, he only hit four in the first half. Why would you guard him? Here's Edmund, or I should say Embrick coming down the left baseline. He missed the shot. Plowden grabs it for Bowling Green in a tie game. Laster up the right side. Moving into the lane, nearly lost it. Fed it to Turner, left corner, three ball, short. Matos trying to get the rebound. And we've got Foul a on George. Foul on Chaz George. I yep, that will take us to the under eight media timeout. Two free throws for Bowling Green when play resumes. 6-10 to play in the ball game. Bowling Green 63, Findlay 63 on the Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield, IMG College. It is time for the American Interiors Air And the men's basketball team faces off against Tiffin in their season opener November 5th. It's Luau night. So bring out the grass skirts and lays before it snows. Join us for fun times and tan lines. Be sure to order your tickets by calling 877-BGSU ticket. What a great way to see multiple athletic events without committing to a full season then the flex plan is for you. Contact the ticket office on how to get your $90 flex plan. All right, fans, our friends at Coke gave us some free t-shirts. If you want them, you gotta be loud. Make some noise because it's t-shirt time. Here at uh, Stroh Center, 6-10 to play. Bowling Green 63, Findlay 63. And the Falcons will be shooting two as play resumes. Foul is on Chaz George. BG's in double bonus the rest of the way. Taylor Matos at the line to shoot two. Taylor, in limited time last year, was 5 of 8 at the free throw line. Is 0 for 1 tonight. He has four points on the night. 6'11 sophomore from New London, New Hampshire. Awaiting the ball from official Bart Wagenke. This for the lead. Got it. BG led by 7 here in the second half, but since then, they've seen Findlay come back and take the lead, and now Bowling Green has grabbed it back by the slimmest of margins. Matos will look to double the advantage, and he does. 65-63, Bowling Green. Scoreboard put up a point for UF there, mistakenly, <laughs> and the officials quickly spotted that. Actually, I think um, Dylan Fry pointed it out to the official. I still remember that game at Anderson Arena when our scoreboard people shorted BG a point and it went to overtime and they lost. <laughs> Nobody fixed it. Should have won in regulation. Here we go, Finley with the ball. Right side, Ethan Linder, who just hit a three a little while ago, drives baseline, tough reverse shot, wouldn't go down. Look at the board crashing again by the Oilers, but Matos finally grabs the rebound, he gives it up. Now it goes ahead to Turner, quick three, that's no good. Rebound, Oilers, this is Edmonds, BG by two. Joey Edmonds pulls it out in transition, feeds it. This is Emmerich with a shot fake and a drive, and he's gonna draw a foul. 
And right there, that shot by Justin Turner was a, just a tad too quick. There's no one there to crash the offensive board to give us a second opportunity. Daquan Plowden just picked up his fourth foul. Team foul number four in the second half. And at the line is Andrew Emrick for the Oilers to try and tie the game with 5.37 to play. Lefty free throw missed. Emmerich, a Southwest Ohio product out of Lakota East High School. Marlon Sierra replaces Taylor Matos for Bowling Green. So the Falcon lineup now, Blaster, Fry, Turner, Plowden, and Sierra. Free throw, a brick, rebound by Plowden. So Emmerich missed them both to keep BG's lead at two. Dylan Fry holds up the Hokum Horn sign as he comes into the front court. Bounces a pass for Turner, high on the left. Guarded by Chaz George. Into the left corner for Laster. Dribbles right, shoots a jumper off the dribble, missed it badly. Plowden the rebound, he'll go up and score. BG by four, Daquan Plowden has 11. And right there, Marlon Sierra got, or excuse me, Michael Laster got bailed out by Daquan because that was a bad shot. Here's Chaz George deep at the left point for UF. Puts it on the floor. Gives it up to Edmonds, whips it right side to Wildermuth. Out top, Emmerich, shot fake. Now leaves it out top for George. Straight on triple, yes. Chaz George, really flat shot, but he knocks it down. Fiddly within one. Yeah, right now, we, we, you know, I said it at half, and we're not doing a good job. We're not running them off that three-point line. There's Dylan Fry with a floater in the lane. Missed it shot. 67-66, BG by one. Here come the Oilers. Looking for the lead with 4.30 to go. Here's Linder, left point, out top to Emrick, spins away, got it to Linder. Shot fake, steps left, that's going in. Nope. Rebound fight, and it's knocked out of bounds by Bowling oh. Green. Nope, that's off Finley. Well, the officials are going to talk yeah, it over as Finley performs oh. the line change. You're going to leave it. Uh, I thought that was off um, the Oilers, but I don't have a whistle. That's correct. 67-66, Bowling Green. Finley with their starters back on the floor, inbound the ball. Here's Gray, out top to Schmack, the Master Lasco right point. Shot fake, drives by Turner, pull up at the elbow, missed the shot. Another offensive rebound as Bruns tapped it out. Master Lasco, open three straight away, no good. BG rebound, Dylan Fry comes up the floor. Dylan stops and shoots and hits. That's a long two straight away, Dylan Fry. He's exceptional at that right there, that pull-up, 69-66 Bowling Green. And right now the Falcons, we're getting very lucky. We're be that Finley are missing wide open jump shots. There's a pass underneath the Bruns, and he scores easily. Great look from out top by Overheiser. And Bruns has 10. BG's lead is one with 3.30 to go. Justin Turner nearly fumbled the ball away. Here's Fry high on the left. Dribbles left, working against Schmack. Step back in the left corner, that's no good. Finley rebound, Bruns, they want the lead. Here's Schmack, bounced it to Bruns in transition. He is good at the rim, should have been an and one. And Finley's got the lead, 70-69. Offensive foul on Bruns. Yeah, he, he, clear, he cleared him off with the off arm and went up for the layup. But. Well, then we both saw something different. They just <laughs> let it go. And BG's on the brink of getting knocked off by Finley here in this exhibition game. Final timeout, media timeout. 3.04 to play. Finley 70, Bowling Green 69. Falcon Sports Radio Network from Learfield IMG College. Free Eric Chesser concert, sponsored by Bud Light and Greenbrier Reynolds. The concert and free BG Burgers tailgate will start at 12 p.m. in Tailgate Park. Eric will announce a $500 scholarship to one lucky student as well. And the Budweiser Good Sports Safe Ride Home program encourages fans to volunteer as designated drivers to and from sporting events around the country. All right, fans.
They were the one point lead. Falcons with possession. They just used a timeout. They have two remaining, as do the Oilers. Dylan Fry, Mike Laster, Justin Turner, Daquan Plowden, and Marlon Sierra on the floor for Bowling Green. Oilers try to trap Fry. He gets away from it. Now 10 to shoot. Here's Laster high on the left. Back to Plowden straight away. Drives, floats one up, and it wouldn't go as it hung on the rim. Findlay rebound Bruns with 2.45 to go. As, Findlay leads by one. As much as I like Daquan, that basketball, Justin Turner has to touch that basketball on that offensive position. Oilers up one with the ball. Overheiser thought about the three left point. Instead came downstairs and bounced at the Bruns for an easy two low on the right. Bruns with 10 in the second half, 14 in the game, and the Oilers lead by three with 2.20 to go. Defensively, we just look a step slow. Here's Plowden trying to drive, and he is fouled, taken down by Bruns, I believe. Should get the foul, and he does. He might have just fouled out of the game. Number 10, Nathan Bruns, fourth. Up oh, is fourth. 72-69, Findlay with 2.15 to go. To the line. Oh, Plowden will shoot a pair. A pair. Daquan, Plowden. Oilers lead by three with 2.15 to play. Plowden with 11 points in the ball game. Now 12. Checking Trey in Diggs checks in for BG, for replacing Marlon Sierra. For Marlon Sierra. Second shot coming for Plowden. Only Green playing without uh, guard Caleb Fields tonight. Probably their best defender. Yeah. I, I, think I think he think makes a difference. Shown. Yeah. Plowden makes them both to cut the deficit to one. Right now we just gotta have we just gotta have a good defensive position. We gotta sit down and play some good man-to-man -man defense. Haven't had many of those. Finley with the ball, gray at the right point. Fakes left, bounces right to Master Lasco. Driving on Turner. Can't get around him. Bounced it on the baseline, but the no-look pass not caught by Bruns. Yeah. No look, no catch. Uh, right there, though, Tig Diggs got lucky because he lost sight of his man. He's back door and he's still guarding on the wing. But fortunately for us, he threw that basketball out of bounds. Chaz George replaces Aaron Overheiser for Findlay. 150 to play. Oilers 72, Falcons 71. Here's Turner. Pull up at the left point off the dribble, left it short. Rebound tipped out by Laster to Fry. Fry got it to Diggs in the left corner. Shot fake, works underneath the Laster. He will put up a tough shot and miss it. Cloud in the rebound. Pass knocked away. Loose ball. Bruns has the ball. He wants a timeout. And he's got it. 90 Waters seconds to play. Time. Findlay 72, Findlay. Bowling Green 71. And Findlay will have the basketball. And right there, you know, good job by Michael Lass for getting that offensive rebound. But he's got to bring it back out instead of forcing up that shot. Then we have Daquan Plowden getting another second opportunity on the offensive board. Tried for the wraparound pass to Diggs, but, you know, it got caught on the Oiler defender players back, and then, you know, ball got fumbled around, and they're the first ones to hit the floor. That's why they have possession of the basketball. Well, that exchange really is a microcosm of this game, a complete broken play, hustle play, and Finley came out on the better end of it. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's just look, for, for whatever reason, it seems like, Finley is a game or two in their season. They're a little quicker there to the basketball. They're moving while the Falcons right now, it seems like we're still trying to figure out the pieces to get the season started. We're, we're, we're just a step slow, and you, you can't have that. And, and you, you're going to lose to a team, you know. They, they might might have come into this game thinking Finley's a lesser opponent, but but they're a good team, a well-coached team, and they're, they're showing it right now. Well, a minute 31 to go. And the Oilers will have possession. They have one timeout left now. The possession arrow favors Bowling Green. Falcons still have two fouls to give before the Oilers are in the one and one. BG is in the double bonus. One thirty-one to go. Let's see if the Falcons uh, maybe change up their defense here, maybe come a little full court. Tommy Schmack will run the show for UF. He's got Anthony Master Lasco out there with him. 
Along with Nate Bruns, Aaron Overheiser, and Tremaine Gray. Here's Overheiser giving it up to Schmack high on the right. Dribbles to the top, moves to the free throw line. The defender falls down. Schmack in the lane, squeezed it up and in. Tommy Schmack gives UF a three-point lead with a minute 10 to play. Falcons with Turner high on the left. Moves to the middle of the floor. Justin Turner gave it up to Diggs. Long three right of the point he hits. Trey Diggs with the long bomb to tie the game at 74 with 58 seconds to play. And right there, good job, good decision by Justin Turner. But, you know, it's not the offensive end. It's got to be defense. Who's going who's gonna to come up with the defensive play to get a stop for the Falcons? Schmack on the take. Kick out to the right point. Master Lasko gave it up to... Uh, a foul on Laster as a pass, and he tried to steal it as that cross-court pass went to Gray. You see, but he, even if he's in the proper de defensive Lester. position, he doesn't have to try to go. He's, he doesn't have to try to jump over the screen because his man's moving, and he's a step slow. And that's just the way we've been all night. He's got to, his the guy he's guarding is moving towards the basketball. He's got to be moving towards the basketball as well. Fifth team foul on Bowling Green. So one yet to give, 20 on the shot clock, 44.7 on the game clock, and a tie game. Finley inbounds off the left sideline, skip it over to the right block, Bruns finds a man, Linder, right side, blocked by Laster! Picked out of the air by Diggs for Bowling Green. That's a great defensive effort right there by Michael Laster, because he sold out on trying to deny his man the basketball. He came back and went it for that open look, good job. 74-74, BG with the ball. A 10 second shot clock, game clock difference. 13, 12 to shoot. Out top, Fry works to the left point, works to the lane, got to the rim and scored with the left hand with 17 seconds to go. BG by two. Oilers into the front court. Schmack, top side, they're gonna look for a three. Yeah. They wanna win it right here. Schmack drives past Diggs, got to the rim and scored. They won't look for a three. Five seconds to go, we're tied at 76. Bad defense right there by the Falcons. We can, you can't let the basketball get to the rim. Tommy Schmack with the take, and we're tied at 76. And I believe that was Finley's timeout there, their yes. last. Yes, Finley called a timeout. Still plenty of time on the clock for the Falcons to come down and get a look. Well, the Falcons in recent years have not been very adept in this situation. Late game, shot needed. Off a timeout. Yeah. Let's see what they can come up with right, here. Right now, it's got to be Dylan Fryer, Justin Turner. Those are our two proven guys on the floor. You got to, one of them's got to get the shot off. I'm thinking Trey Diggs might end up with a shot. Well, that too. Well, that's the thing. You put the basketball in Justin Turner or Dylan Fry's hand, and if you can draw the defense, Dix is going to be sitting in the perimeter wide open for a look. Well, if you're BG right now, the worst thing you want is overtime. 76-76 tie, 5.3 seconds to go. BG has two timeouts left. They're in the double bonus. Falcons will have to come the length of the floor here. Laster will inbound it. Fry, Turner, Diggs, and Plowden on the floor. Laster looking, looking, looking. Inbound to Diggs, back to Laster. Into the front court with three. Laster into the lane. Bounce pass knocked away, and we're going to overtime. What wasn't, wasn't a bad idea, but pass got tough. Tip. Yeah, I'll tell you what happened there, I think. Laster played the play. That was supposed to be a pass. That's the way it was drawn up. The pass was not there. Yeah. He should have taken the shot. Yes. But he didn't, and we go to overtime. And the Finley Oilers, uh, who deserve to win this game, will have to try and steal one in overtime now. And Bowling Green. Got to feel lucky to get to the extra yeah, session. You're exactly right because we have not played a good defensive game of basketball. Our effort hasn't been what it needs to be. So you're exactly right. Good job of forcing the overtime. Now let's see if we can use this five minutes and, and win this basketball game. So at the end of regulation, Findlay 76, Bowling Green 76. And that was a well-designed full court out of bounds late clock play, and Laster just sort of made the wrong decision. Yeah. It, it, one of the few times you'd want him to take that shot, but you know, it, 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 it was there, the defender just read that play and didn't go, it didn't pull up and, and didn't step up to stop the basketball. He stayed home with Daquan, and he was able to get a hand on the basketball. So after regulation, 
The Oilers and the Falcons are tied at 76. For the University of Finley, Nate Bruns has 14 points. Joey Edmonds has 15 points. Leading Bowling Green, Justin Turner has 16. Dylan Fry has 10. Trey Diggs has 11. Daquan Plowden has 13. So five minutes on the clock. This exhibition game will have some free basketball. Nothing is over until we decide it is. You know, the, the thing about it that the Falcons got to realize, the Oilers are looking and that they're living at that three-point line. We have to do a better job. We have to run them off the line. And then when you do that, you have to have help defense not allowing and stepping up to take the drive away. Well, Schmack, the last time Finley had the ball, I think took advantage of that mentality. We thought they were looking for a three as well, and Schmack was able to get into the lane and score. Falcons five on the floor to start overtime. Mike Laster, Dylan Fry, Trey Diggs, Daquan Plowden, Justin Turner. Plowden in center circle against Finley's Andrew Emrick. Emrick will be joined by Master Lasko, Gray, Schmack, and Overheiser. Falcons win the tap. Moving right to left as we begin overtime. Then laying a man to man. Both teams have been a man all night. Here's Laster in the left corner. Give it up to Turner, nearly taken away by a master Lasko. JT with a drive and a floater, missed the shot, got it back, put up a tougher shot and scored it. Justin Turner, Turner gives BG the lead. And like I said, it hasn't been our offense. It's been at the defensive end that's been our struggle. So let's see if we can sit down and play some solid defense in this overtime. Laster, or I should say Schmack, drives, kicks it to Master Lasko right side. Three ball off the back iron, tipped up, but a foul going to be called on the offensive player, Emrick. So he went over the back of one of the Falcons. Foul is called number 12, Andrew Emrick. He's a bit incredulous foul. about it, but it will come to the other end for two shots for Bowling Green. Again, the Falcons are two in the double bonus, the and they still have one foul to give before the Oilers are in the one and one. And who's going to be shooting? Is Diggs. it Diggs? Yeah. Trey Diggs, who had 11 the in regulation, will step to the line. Diggs. Diggs, a junior college transfer. Hits the free throw to give BG a three-point lead. We have uh, seen 40 seconds elapsed in the overtime. Diggs hits another free throw. 80-76, Bowling Green scores the first four points of overtime. Finley with the basketball. Here's Gray, high on the left. Comes to the top of the circle. Found a cutter coming to the rim. Reverse oh. layup and one. Wow. What a shot that... by Overheiser. Fouled by Plout. Wow, I don't know about the foul. That was a great basketball move and good shot, but wow. And I think Daquan just fouled out. BG caught at number 25, Daquan Plowden, his fifth personal foul. Indeed, he has. Fouled fifth personal foul. Game. Into the lineup for the Falcons. Number 22. So Marlon, Marlon Sierra, Sierra will replace him. 80-78 is Bowling Green's lead as Overheiser hits that and one attempt now at the line. And the backdoor cut victimized the Falcons yeah, there. You're exactly right. But there's got to be weak side help also. Overheiser free throw is a poor shot. Rebounded by Fry. That thing had no chance. 80-78. Falcons lead for a minute into overtime in this exhibition game. Here's Dylan Fry. Leaves it out top for Diggs. He'll dribble right. Now take it over into the wing. Dribble off his foot. Get on it. Save it to Laster. 12 to shoot. Laster dribbling through traffic to the elbow. Left-hand shot. That's in a brick. Rebound knocked around on the ground. Oilers have it. Overheiser saved it to Gray. Scoops it back to Schmack. Oilers down two. Bruns driving on Diggs, got to the rim, through the foul. There's two guys at the, the last possession for the Falcons trying to do too much. Diggs, you know, almost lost it, and then Michael Laster got a little bit out of control. And then, you know, you go down and you allow the, the, the offensive player to get by you. 3.34 to go in overtime. 80-78, Bowling Green with the lead, but Fentley at the line in the person of Nate Bruns. Free throw popped out of there. 
Well, as the Falcons have really struggled at the line in the first half, it's been the Oilers in the second half. Second one coming for Bruns. That one missed. George tipped the rebound as nobody boxed out again, but BG grabbed it. Well, the next time I see a box out by the Falcons will be the first. 80-78, <laughs> BG with the lead on the ball. There's Turner, jab step right, dribbles left, had it knocked away, retrieved it. Clipped it to Diggs, left wing, 12 to shoot. Hand off back to Turner, left side, comes out top, got to the free throw line. Yes, with that pull up, Jay, Justin Turner with 20. BG up 82-78. Yeah, right there, good job by JT not settling for the jump shot. And then good job not picking up the charge. Here's Schmack on the drive, poked away by Turner, then taken away by Fry. Dillon pulls it ahead to Turner, right corner, big nope. three, short. Long rebound, Findlay with Schmack. Down the floor, tripped up by Fry, but kept his balance and then was fouled by the second man down. That is Diggs, 82-78, Bowling Green. I, I don't understand right there. We have a three-on-one. Why doesn't D uh, Dylan Fry go and shoot the layup? Instead, he kicks it out for a three-point shot. An open three-point shot, but I think we had a layup if Justin either runs to the hoop or Dylan continues for the, to, for the layup. Foul will send Tommy Schmack to the line. One and one for the point guard from St. Edward High School. 82-78, BG's lead with 2.47 to go in overtime. Tip in try by Wildermuth over the bigger player, Sierra, who again failed to box out, but luckily it went off the glass no good, and BG controls it with 2.35 to go and a four-point lead. Justin Turner running the show for BG, working out top. Pulls up at the free throw line. Need it, got it. Justin Turner. Six of BG's eight in the overtime, and the Falcons lead by six with 2.20 to go. Big possession here defensively. Here's Linder for UF. Comes to the right point to Schmack. Schmack working in the right wing. To the elbow, lob pass to nobody. He and Wildermuth got a little off the beaten path there. And it's a turnover. Rare yeah. miscue by the Oilers. And, and, and I just, it just shows that when, when, when you get them out of their comfort zone, just force them to do something that they don't want to do, it leads to bad decision by, by the Oilers. So good job, good defense right there by the Falcons. It's a universal truth, no matter who you're playing. 84-78, Bowling Green, two minutes to play in overtime. Here's Justin Turner working in the middle of the floor. Leaves it for Fry high in the left. Dillon jabs right. Dribbles left, tries to turn the corner, step back shot over Edmonds, won't go down. Rebound pulled out of there by Laster for Bowling Green. Rare offensive rebound for BG in a clutch spot there. Laster now works to the free throw line, gave it to Diggs, lets it fly off the mark for three. Loose ball rebound, Oilers, a minute 30 to go. Falcons by six, we're in overtime. UF, left corner, three ball, no good by Bruns. Rebound to Linder, kick out top to Edmonds. Back to Linder, out top, his pass to nobody. Thought he saw a man in the corner. That Sorry. man had left, Edmonds had moved out of there and he Actually, still threw it. he threw it to his teammate. His teammate was standing on the bench and I think that messed him up. So yeah. he, he tried passing it to him on the wing. Timeout. Bowling Green, I believe, although the Oilers did get one back for overtime. Nope, it is by Findlay with a minute 20 to go in OT. BG 84, Findlay 78. And no matter the result here, KC, whether this goes down as a win or a loss, I think Coach Huger and his staff have a lot of ammunition before this team heads to Baton Rouge. Yeah, you're exactly right. And for, you know, if I'm on the coaching staff, the first thing I'm drawing up is just our, our, our defensive effort. Just, I, I don't think it was good. I don't think it's been good tonight. And then the second thing is boxing out. We've got to do a better job on the boards as it's going to be a long season, even with all your offensive talent. If you're giving teams three and four opportunities, they're going to be in a lot of games. So the Falcons have the ball. Possession in the backcourt on the left sideline. Not the easiest place in the world to inbound from. 120 to go in overtime. BG leads by six. They are in the double bonus. 
Inbound pass to Fry coming up the right sideline. Turner with him. He looks at him, takes it to the rim, gets blocked by Chaz George. Drop it off. It's an easy layup if you draw the defense to you and you pass it to your well, teammate running down the court. I think he thought his little court. look was going to fool Chaz George, and he just stayed within range of Fry and oh. blocked the shot with a minute 16 to go. Falcons will inbound just right of the rim. Get it into Sierra. Now Justin Turner. Key possession here with a minute 10 left in overtime. BG up six with the ball. Justin Turner in center circle. Guarded by Tremaine Gray. Shot clock at 12. Game clock at a minute. Justin Turner. High on the right. Now crosses over to his left. Comes to the middle of the floor. Hesitates. Drives. Gets in the lane. Fade away. No. Rebound loose. Findlay has it. Chaz George whips it ahead and turned it over. Tried to get an outlet pass to Master Lasco, but... Inaccurate with it. It was 48.6. BG with the ball back and a six-point lead. You're exactly right. Good job. Hey, well, actually, one of the few times the Falcons actually had their heads turned getting back on defense and kind of forced the errant pass. But, you know, good take by Justin Turner. I thought he got bumped, but no call. Now Keep Fry playing. with the ball in the backcourt. BG by six. Under 45 seconds to go in overtime. Sierra top side for Bowling Green finds a cutter fry open underneath the basket for two and that might do it an eight-point lead with 35 seconds to go in overtime here come the Oilers Master Lasco in the paint gets a great screen inside from Wildermuth and gets right to the rim and scores Anthony Master Lasco with the 11 and a foul in the backcourt by Master Lasco with 25.9 BG up 86 80 and Justin Turner will shoot two 26 seconds to go in overtime. And Bowling Green, to say they were taken to the limit would be an understatement here today. As I mentioned, Findlay played Toledo on Sunday and took them all the way through, lost 75-68. This one going to overtime. Turner with the free throw as Bowling Green will try to put this thing away, 87-80. With 25.9 seconds to play. Justin Turner with 23 points. Now 24. Oilers without a timeouts come into the front court with Schmack. Quick three. Missed it badly. Justin Turner the rebound for Bowling Green. And it looks like the Oilers will concede. And did they put themselves well. You bet they did. Bowling Green, a team many think could win the Mid-American Conference this year. Didn't play their best, but they hold off the Oilers and post an 88-80 victory. Very well played game tonight. Charlie Ernst and his Oilers came in here and took the Falcons to the limit. Bowling Green gets eight points in overtime from Justin Turner and prevails by that exact margin, 88-80. to Thanks for tuning in. For Kirk Callan, this is Todd Walker saying good night from Stroh Center.